Oh, man, I had this funny dream. We reviewed Hereditary and Logan had a cult. And you were there. And you were there. And I was there? Yeah. And, and Dan, he couldn't keep his hands off the chocolate cake. And there were naked people enchanting. And yeah, man, I, I kind of vaguely have the same dream as you. Yeah. Bear Claw, he was just going on and on and on about Payman being a bird. Well, you see, it was very clear that Payman was actually a bird, if you think about it, right? Like, first off, this all came from the Lesser Keys of Solomon, and many of the demons and these in there were as bad birds. Come to Freddy. So you are Three, two, one. Welcome to the Madness. We are the Mouths of Madness, your new favorite podcast for horror movie reviews. We're coming to you live tonight from the Dungeon of Doom. This is our episode 10 on the 1984 A Nightmare on Elm Street. My name is Kevin. Let me introduce you to the other members of Madness. First, we have Dan. Dan, did you bring the coffee with you? I got tons of black gold for us. It'll last us for days. Ooh, we're going to need it. We got to stay awake. Next, we have the mayor of Halloween Town, Bearclaw. Bearclaw, you have those caffeine pills with you? Oh, I got those caffeine pills ready to go, Kevin. I'm very excited to get this through this episode. Let's uh, let's keep things rolling here. But yeah, yeah, definitely got those. Ooh, yeah, we're going to need them. Yeah. And last, we have the youngest member of Madness, my son, Logan. Logan, I see you brought the energy drinks with you. Yeah, I definitely did. Does it feel a little hot in here? I'm feeling a little hot in here. You know, I'm feeling a little jittery, you know. Oof. Gotta stay awake. Yeah. Gotta, gotta stay awake. <laughs> gotta stay awake. Gotta stay awake. I know that there are a lot of other great horror movie podcasts out there, but what separates us from the other ones is that we're going to be bringing you the older versus younger generation perspective. Myself, Dan, and Bearclaw, we are all born in the 1980s, while my son Logan, he was born in the early 2000s. So this is the clash of the generations. Before we get into the episode, I want to plug some of our stuff and where to find us. Please go follow us on Instagram at mouths.of.madness. We also have a great YouTube channel at Mouths of Madness. And we have a new Straight Jacket episode coming soon. And it's going to be a review on the 1993 Hocus Pocus with our good buddies. We thought this was good. Finally... Please email us at the padded room at outlook.com and let Bearclaw know what nightmares you've had. I, I want to know. I want to know what's keeping you up at night. You know, you got to you got to send me those emails. Definitely. Bearclaw is interested. I need to know. <laughs> He's going to be. I'm going to have plenty of time to read them, too. because I... <laughs> <laughs> He needs something to keep him. I going. need something to keep me awake. Woo. Now, for content consumed this episode, we're going to let you know what we've been watching, what we've been listening to, what we've been reading, or gaming. Now, for me this week, like I said before, we just reviewed Hocus Pocus for Straight Jacket Talk. So actually, I just watched Hocus Pocus, and it's definitely one of my favorite movies, especially as a kid. Definitely a darker Disney movie. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and we talk about that. <laughs> a lot of kidnapping and a lot of... Well, well like, kids. Uh, they kill a kid. They kill a kid. <laughs> yeah, not only that, but, like, it's funny how they try and retcon it in the new movie, because, like, oh. there's a second one, and they try and make the, the book of uh, that's bound in, in human flesh, like, the good guy, which was a strange turn, which was a hard yeah, left. Yeah, that movie sucked. They, <laughs> the yeah. hard left they took in the second one, but the first one one is classic yeah <laughs> they're making yeah. a third one too oh really yeah oh. they're like let's try to get as much money as we can into this <laughs> listen i'm a hocus pocus fan so i'll be seeing the third one too <laughs> I, saw, I saw the second one and i will definitely be seeing the third one yeah. so i will not <laughs> boo to you <laughs> whatever man no that's it for me dan what do you have logan i'm sorry if this was going to be yours but i'm gonna share it we actually went to philadelphia 
me, Kevin, and Logan awesome. to catch night two of WrestleMania. I knew somebody would have that. That's why I, I actually was, was not going to say that. <laughs> so I'm glad you did. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So that was our first, uh, my first WrestleMania to go to. Kevin's been to a couple. Logan's first one as well. Yep. Very, very cool experience. It's kind of a historical one being at the 40th one and it being without Vince McMahon. Very, very cool, very surreal experience to go. If you're a wrestling fan, highly recommend if you ever get an opportunity to take in one of those outdoor events, go for it. It's pretty cool. Any yeah. notable matches? Obviously, the, the main event, Roman Reigns with Cody Rhodes, like they basically had every star from like the last 20 years kind of make an appearance in that match. It was pretty cool. Kind of like nice. ours, like the Clash of the Generations. We all said like the Clash of the Generations at WrestleMania. We had The Rock, The Undertaker, John Cena, and then we had the younger generation with like Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa. Because like you said, it's like 40 years, you know, four years WrestleMania into that match. Like it was all yeah. made for it. What, what's wild is it's like generally like there's like a top star that passes the torch down to like the next star. Whereas this, it almost seemed like all the stars collectively passed the torch down. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, rightfully so, though. Cody Rhodes finished his story. Yeah. New, uh, new WWE. Now it's time for me to finish champion. my story. <laughs> <laughs> what story that is? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Maybe get that restraining order against Billy. <laughs> you and Billy need to finish your story. Yeah. I'd Is like that it for you, Dan? Him. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. How about you, Bear Claw? What do you have this well, week? Well, I have been proudly fighting for managed democracy in Helldivers 2, which is uh, a video game that is pretty popular at the current at the current moment. And it's very it's very in line with uh what would I say? Starship, uh, Starship Troopers. Troopers. It's oh, very in line with nice. Starship Troopers. You get dropped down on a planet, you get to squash some bugs, you get to, to beat up some robots. It's a pretty fantastic game with, with a real kind of meta narrative to it. So it's a lot of fun. Highly recommend it to everybody out there. But I've just been having a good time popping in and out of that for 20, 30 minutes at a clip and then back to the grindstone. But yeah, that's what I've been up to. What have you been doing, Logan? Uh, really nothing. You know, like movies and TV shows, usually I watch a lot. Like I can't say anything that really like hit me over the head. I would say like, you know, I finally finished Invincible. Really good ending. Yeah, really I gotta, strong I ending. That up. I, I, oh my god! Yes, you do. I, I'm only in. I've only done uh, part one of season two. I haven't seen part two of so season two. I will say season one. I think is better than season two. Like it's after the first season, it's of the it, first you know? season. It's but like gonna be. you're gonna see it like at the ending. Like I feel like part two they kind of like they really did it wrong while like doing the mid-season like finale because if they kept on going i uh -huh. would have been so into it the only reason i wasn't is because they waited so long to release the second part that i was like this is cool but you know i was waiting for this and it really just like yeah it really didn't hit like it didn't hit like last season when last season, every episode, I was like at uh -huh. the edge of my seat, like, what the hell is going to happen? Uh -huh. And even though I know about the comic books, it's still surprising every time. I think the big thing I've been doing is I've been trying to read a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to do a goal of mine, which is to read a new book every month. And my book of last month that I finally finished into this month is Three Inch Teeth, which is this fantastic story about this kind of forest officer who is very uh, strict on what goes on in his part of the land, goes after a bear that has been taking out almost all of the civilians and also like kind of making issues for others. So it's kind of like man versus nature. Oh. Neat. So it's a really cool book. I highly recommend it. Now, without any further ado, grab a beer, pull up a chair, hold on to your straight jacket tight, and let's dive into the madness. We watched A Nightmare on Elm Street from 1984. This is the 40th anniversary. Happy birthday, Freddy. Happy birthday, Freddy. <laughs> you old fart. Yeah. <laughs> you old yeah. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> this was written and directed by Wes Craven. D-O-G. Yeah, it was based on some real-life events. Really? Yeah. <laughs> With a yeah. dream? <laughs> yeah, so Wes Craven was inspired from articles from the L.A. Times where refugees from Southeast Asia who had fled to the U.S. because of genocide had suffered some disturbing nightmares, and they refused to sleep. 
and some of the men ended up dying in their sleep soon after. Medical authorities called the phenomenon the Asian death syndrome. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. To like, all right. you know, <laughs> pretty racist. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty intense and like, uh, well, it's just pretty intense. Like, imagine dying of not sleeping. That would be the that'd be just about the worst thing I can imagine. Yeah, right, I re- up, right up from like drowning. Yeah, I read one of the stories too. Is this guy like who uh, was trying to stay awake? It, it was a younger guy and he was trying to stay awake he had the coffee pot hidden i mean he was taking caffeine pills doing kind of the things we see in this movie Mm -hmm. and he had warned you know if i'm if i fall asleep i'm gonna die and he did so that's really what sparked it in wes craven's head for this idea also he used the song from 1970s called Dreamweaver. <laughs> Dreamweaver. That's Bearclaw giving us his great rendition. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, so he makes kind of these inspirations for what was to become A Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, A Nightmare on Elm Street had a budget of $1.1 million. Do you Which guys... Which is insane. Yeah, I know, That's right? A lot. No, a lot. No. For the quality that this movie is? <laughs> it didn't feel like Oh, it. dang. Logan's got some wow. hot takes. Wow. It looked like they used like a good like the budget of like the leprechaun. Oh wow. 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 Shots fired. Dang. Shots fired. Oh man. Send your okay. emails to Logan yeah, at the Patterson. Well, you those, know, the set designs <laughs> and all that stuff. The especially like... hateful ones to re Logan. <laughs> <laughs> I guess with like practical effects and the fires and all the stuff like that gunpowder scene was probably hell <laughs> I I can't I don't know why, but like we're gonna get into it, but like I cannot say that with a straight face. How much was how much was it. my bloody Valentine made for? You know what? That's a good that's a good question. It wasn't it was less than that or, or i feel like it was it was or i feel like it was more than that yeah. i feel like horror movies i feel like it was like have two million million or something yeah like i that. feel like it was more than that and like made like five million. i don't know where that money went yeah <laughs> well <laughs> since this had a, a measly budget according to logan uh, i would no, or, I'm or not a saying big that. budget sorry yeah. a big budget. big budget logan yeah. thinks this had a huge budget of 1.1 1. 1 million dollars it did have a measly budget <laughs> yeah <laughs> how much do you guys think that this made at the box office oh this made this had to have made 30 million dollars oh god 45 i'm gonna price is right you i'm gonna price is right you and say 50 and the closest again Wow. $57 million. Damn. Yeah. Freddy. You, in 1984. You lucky 1984, bitch. that's like... <laughs> Freddy. That's some good movies. Those are some icon Honeys. numbers. Yes. Those are some icon numbers. Yeah, and that's probably a reason why <laughs> there were multiple sequels. We sure yeah. went bigger. How many, how many sequels were there? Seven sequels, I think? Fifteen. <laughs> so you have Dream Warriors was three... Uh, four was Dream Child, right? Five was... The names are just god-awful. <laughs> I feel like I'm missing one. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Five? I forgot the name of five, but then there's Freddy's Dead, right? Uh-huh. And then there's A New Nightmare. Seven. Uh-huh. And then there's Freddy versus Jason. If you want to count that as canon. Yeah. So there's like eight. Yeah, and, and then, then, then there's the a remake. remake. Again. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, we're coming up on nine. Forgetting the seven, yeah. Nine nine total Freddy yeah. films, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Freddy vs. Jason, this one, and I think I've seen Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Yeah. Those are those are the ones that I think I've seen. There's seven movies overall. Yeah, so that makes sense. I don't. I, the thing I have, the question I have is, uh-huh. to me, not many of the seven are <laughs> that strong of movies. Well, uh-huh. when you named out the titles, I was like, God, they, these sound terrible. Dream Warriors, Dream Child, <laughs> Freddy's <laughs> Dead. Like, God damn, man, they were just like. Oh, let's get the ball rolling and let's make a lot of money. <laughs> just any any sequel, just make sure it includes either the terms dream, child, or Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the holy trinity of nightmare movies. Just, just a dartboard. They're like, this one's going to be called Dream Child. <laughs> they got you know like different names. Two, I, Freddy's Dead is just called Freddy's Dead, right? It's not Nightmare on Elm Street. Right. Yeah, so they changed that name too. Oh, so. Jesus. Huh? Trying to capitalize on the Freddy, yeah. you know, icon. Now, currently on Rotten Tomatoes, 
A Nightmare on Elm Street has a 95% critic score mm -hmm. and an 84% audience score. So this is certified fresh. Of course it is. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. This is a classic. Our open discussion, I'm going to start us off with just our overall thoughts. Was this your first time watching this movie? What do you think on Nightmare on Elm Street? So I'll go ahead and kick it off here. I think that this is definitely not my first time watching this, as I think any child of the 80s will tell you, Freddy was monolithic in our time. I don't know how this horror character transcended a horror character, but I mean, I really think that he did. I mean, he really... It was very strange how prevalent he was in advertising and, and different things. And, and like, as far as like uh, on Icon, you know, I mean, I, and, and I'm not sure precisely what connected with everybody in him. But I've heard I heard of Freddy long before I had heard of The Shape or, or, or any other really horror figure. I remember, you know, I was sitting here thinking to myself and I had to look them up on YouTube and they're all on YouTube. Do you guys remember those Freddy hotline? Yeah. Commercials yes. that used to yep. be on. Dial this number now. I've got some tales to tell. Freddy's favorite bedtime stories. <laughs> Dead time stories. Oh my Those, god! Like the one nine hundred, and like kids would run up the phone bill yes. like crazy. Like dial Freddy or, <laughs> or challenge Freddy to trivia. To bring it back to the movie and away from from like Freddy, this was the nineteen eighties, nineteen eighty four horror movie this is it i mean it had the cool like synthesizer it had the like scary but still you know trying to be entertaining and funny villain he's got this weird claw hand there's a lot going on in this movie but it, it's it's a lot of fun still and it's still very terrifying like uh, with tina's in the body bag and like uh, so, uh, that was very creepy so i i don't know like i said my impression is is positive i've seen this movie quite a bit and you know to me this is this is the the platonic uh um horror movie frankly you know yeah, yeah no definitely i was i was talking to everyone a little bit before this recording and i was saying before my last watch on this for our podcast i really was thinking about nightmare on elm street and i was associating kind of the other nightmare uh -huh. movies you know like oh man this is gonna be you know goofy and i don't know if i'm gonna be a hundred percent into it because it had been a while since i've seen this and when I watched it, I was engaged, man. It yeah. just, it pulled me right in. I like totally really forgot how good this movie is, you know? And I admit openly, I am a huge Halloween franchise fan. I, I even like some of the quote unquote bad ones as in, you know, Curse of Michael Myers. For Halloween and, too, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Bearclaw won't let that one die, huh? <laughs> as long as you keep laughing, he's going to keep doing it. So if you, just, if you just don't laugh at his awful jokes I about Halloween 2, he'll stop. He'll stop. Stop engaging him. Stop, en <laughs> stop enabling him. Editor's note, that's not going to work because I always laugh at the Halloween 2 jokes, and now Bearclaw knows it. <laughs> I will yep. do my best. So, I mean, I'm a Halloween fan, and, you know, I'd really forgotten how good this this particular nightmare on elm street is because like you said it is there are some fun moments but it's also scary and they do the balance perfect i think in this you know freddy hasn't become the comic character yet mm -hmm. you know he yeah. he has some one liners but they're menacing they're they're yeah. not they're not meant to be you know get the laughs and be cool and all that I'm stuff i'm your boyfriend now <laughs> <laughs> i mean those are just in their classic and yeah. like you said he almost he transcends movies horror movies you know i mean he became a part of pop culture there forever mm -hmm. you know so i mean it was really cool actually taking another look back at this movie and really appreciating it for what it is dan how about you is this uh your first time or you've oh, seen God this no. one <laughs> uh this is this is like my earliest memory of horror. Like Freddy Krueger is responsible for years of nightmares growing up. Yeah. For me. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, you know, having older siblings and a mom who's also like really, really into horror movies and would pretty much have me watch them with her. Yeah. No matter what. I was very much around a Nightmare on Elm Street movie a lot. It was very taboo, though. My siblings would like not try to get me to watch it. 
in like school. I remember Freddy Krueger being kind of like this very, very taboo thing. Like, oh man, you saw Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, like, and right. if you like saw it and you weren't afraid, like you were like really, really tough. <laughs> <laughs> You're wow. like the king of the school. It was like beating Mike Tyson in uh, Mike Tyson's punch <laughs> yeah. out, you know? But I mean, like just the, the concept of dying in your sleep is typically seen as like the best way to go out. <laughs> but <laughs> not in this. Though. Wes Cravens managed to find a way to take Solus away from us with that. Yeah. By concocting a dream demon. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> it, it is just like uh, Bear Claw mentioned, and I was very surprised that we got like less than five minutes into our podcast about the crazy world of like hotlines uh-huh. back in the 80s and early 90s. Like, I just I couldn't believe that Freddy Krueger had his own hotline. Well, and like that was like my first exposure to him because I hadn't seen these movies till I was like 12 or 13, but I knew about Freddy Krueger yeah, well before did. that. Like, I like, swear, I remember me and Dan talking when we were like in elementary school about Freddy Krueger. Yeah. And I had never seen those movies, but like we all knew Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Going back to like how he became this pop icon, like it's just crazy how like. He was featured on MTV. Yeah. Like he had his own music video. Yeah. He uh, had his own TV show. Yes. I remember that show. I'm surprised McDonald's didn't capitalize on him and come out with a toy line. Another toy line. Another missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. Another missed opportunity. I feel like that one is a little less. Or would you get like Tina in the body bag? Yeah. (laughs) Like, what would you do for toys? You'd be like a little Uh, race car. obviously, (laughs) Obviously, you have Glenn the Exploding Bed Boy. (laughs) <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, exactly. That's all too soon. Money. <laughs> the money leprechaun right makes sense because let's be honest, the leprechaun is for like, you know. You know, the kid. actor who played Glenn looks like he might have a bright future in Hollywood. Yeah, oh, he, looks I wonder. Wonder. he looks like he might feed Marilyn Manson a physic or two to get him to stop talking. <laughs> he might do some drugs with Paul Bettany in the future and maybe go to trial with his ex wife. But who, you know who pooped in his bed? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> defecated. He, he seems like the type. Yeah, that would, he's got that look about. I him. wonder if 1984, if he ever had the thought and it said, you know, I'm gonna have a wife who just takes a crap on my bed. You know, was that ever? What's I scary? Think, what if <laughs> Freddy Krueger? Still can't believe that happened. <laughs> what What if the Freddy Krueger scene actually inspired the the poop bed scene? Oh, that's true. Twenty forty it's years true later. Conspiracy theory. Dang. Like maybe he he. I still like, can't believe that I was like an a messy actual bed. thing. Who just pooped on your bed? Now, Logan, this was your first watch, right? Of a night on yeah. Elm Street. Wow. Yeah. So I, we're all waiting to hear before we, your Jesus thoughts. Before we even hear about your thoughts on the movie, did you know? How, like, what was your experience with Freddy before? You're watching because I'm curious because he's so ubiquitous. That's the thing about Freddie that is and so you're using these big too. words. I don't but know what it, they mean. <laughs> but here's what I want to know: like, is he still like he was when we were kids? You know, talked about on the same levels of you know this mythicism that is he like a yeah. household name yeah. for yeah. The, the young whippersnappers your age? I like how you guys are using these big words. Like, let's use the words of my generation. You use sus more. And you use, I don't know, what do you call us kids now, idiots? So no cap, Logan. Have all, have the <laughs> Was kids, he bussing? Have the kids bussing? Is, 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 is Freddy still bussing? Are they gooning? Does Freddy, does Freddy still have the riz? Or, uh, is, Are they it, fitting uh, to watch a Nightmare on Elm Street movie on a Saturday night? I, I'm going to just pass that by because that really hurt me in the heart. That Five got check. me. Yeah, 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 the vibe check. The vibes are not here. But uh, okay. no. I think for me, kids never really talked about Freddy Krueger, which is kind of weird. I think obviously people knew about him. I think for my generation, it was Pennywise. Pennywise oh, was yeah, the big point. was the big horror movie. I remember many sleepovers of kids were like, oh, don't worry. Pennywise is going to look out for you. Something stupid like that. And I'd always be like, thanks for that. Now I'm not going to be able to sleep at night. And I think... Pennywise, because of how recent it was, because the new It came out in, like, 2017, so, like, that was very fresh. Well, Freddy Krueger didn't have a movie since, like, the 80s, so, like, the nightmares weren't really talked about. Halloween really wasn't talked about until the new one in 2018, so, like, Freddy Krueger was kind of still, 
around, but not as much. You know, he wasn't as present in our generation. People still talked about him. It wasn't like, you know, a big thing, like Freddy's going to get you or something like that. Bloody Mary was a big one, like as well as the Boogeyman and Candyman, other stuff like that. Like those ones were are still like talked about. So like those will never go away. Freddy Krueger, not really, which I'm kind of surprised about. Like, I think. Yeah, I'm surprised about that, too. Well, I mean, to Logan's point, though, they haven't had a Freddy movie. Yeah, they really haven't been. I I think once like recency, like I'm not going to say recency bias, but like recency in the kids minds are obviously the big thing. So like Pennywise was coming out or it was coming out in 2017. So obviously kids were talking about that. Michael Myers is kind of eh. all the other like horror movie icons really weren't talked about. Ghostface, I guess, but like not really. Yeah. So like there wasn't really a big like thing that people were talking about, you know. So as this being your first real exposure to Freddy, what were your thoughts on the movie? I mean, I obviously knew about him, but like this movie was definitely like new experience for me because I've never seen a movie quite like this. I was kind of thrown into it like first I can because the beginning is so damn good. Mm -hmm. Like, and I had to watch it back because I was like, man, this is so good. Like just the opening because I was telling you uh, because it's New Line Cinema. It kind of reminded me of the Turtles movie. Ninja Turtles. Yep. Because it kind of has the same music as that. So I'm like, God damn, are the turtles about to pop up and kick Freddy Krueger's ass or something like that? I love the old New Line Cinema logo with the black and red. Like that. Nathan, play that music because it's really good. (laughs) The first second you're into it, like I was enthralled. Like it was so good. And I was like, what is going on? Who is this? What are these people? And I think like there's so many twists and turns that make this movie so unpredictable that I couldn't possibly predict what was going to happen next and i tried many times during this movie because me and my dad watched this we were watching it together so like i was seeing his reaction and my reaction together and i was trying to piece together what was happening and i still had no bloody idea what the hell was going on yeah it was cool like when when things would happen like i remember the scene where she pulled freddie's hat out of her dream and yeah you were like whoa like that yeah. was cool yeah. that got me i was yeah. like holy shit now we got it now we got our solution we got to pull him out of the dream and then i was like ah oh, they're going to be like dream warriors or something <laughs> and i saw your reaction going like yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it was cool. It was it was really cool watching you like be engaged with the movie because like you said, you're right away the opening scenes you're thrown into where he's working on the glove with the knives. Uh-huh. You're thrown into Tina's dream right away. Uh-huh. And and what's really cool and I love is you really don't get glimpse like a full glimpse of freddy yet you know it's yeah. teases, teases i love it yeah you know because it's like wedding you it's like it's a slow burn yes to get to it and it's so good because you don't ever see him but like you see like the knives and you see like everything else you see like the sweater yeah so like uh, like hints of what he is yes. but you never see his face what's wild to think about is i think he's only in the movie a total of like 15 minutes tops yeah i believe that yep. yeah and you realize, like, it takes four or five hours to put all that prosthetic and makeup <laughs> on. Did they do all those scenes, like, right away? Like, let's just get this over with? Or did they have to wait and do it over and over and over again? Uh, that's a good question. So, I, the only thing I had seen on that was that because the makeup took so long and, you know, the way they shot it, he would have to stay in that makeup all day. Oh, hey, amen. And like, yeah. Towards the end of filming, he got super frustrated because he. Yeah. Be I would all be day. too. Yeah, that was some heavy. He starting ma- to irritate his skin. Yeah, and that's right. What it yeah. Was. Yeah. yeah, he was Jesus. getting like burns from like it being on so long. So yeah, I mean, kudos oh. to Robert England on that. Yeah. But yeah, for like to to get in the chair and do that four hours for, um, however how many days yeah. of shooting. Right. And to only be featured in the movie for like 15 <laughs> minutes. Oh, that's got to be a kick in the uh, groin. Kudos to him. What, well, a, what a warrior. You know, again, though, it lets your imagination kind of build up mm-hmm. Freddy. And then by the time you actually see his face on screen, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's I couldn't terrifying. imagine, you know, seeing this in the theater in 84 and just seeing that face for the first Hell, time. Seeing it in 2024 <laughs> is still a little much. Man, this gets me to my next question for you guys. 
I mean, is Freddy Krueger the most iconic horror figure? One of. Uh, I I would argue the, I would argue the most iconic yeah. horror figure. I think I I would I could make that case all day. I mean, I, I love Michael Myers. Don't get me wrong. But until we had watched Halloween movies, I had never heard of or I had never heard of him referred to as the shape. I'd never watched any of the Halloween movies, but I I, I heard about Freddy Krueger well years before I saw a Freddy Krueger yeah. movie. Uh, uh, to your point, Bearclaw, I agree. Like Freddy Krueger has permeated outside of the horror bubble. He had a, he had a kid's telephone line. <laughs> Yeah. Like it, it was like he started, he started, I, it started out. We got to give man. him like an award. It or started something. out like in the, in the, the very early eighties, like him being a horror character catered oh, towards kids. adult, towards like an adult movie. And then it slowly started becoming more and more as it became more campier. Yeah. More acceptable for kids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Wait, right. he did an adult movie. Porn or just like an no, actual movie? No, like an R-rated adult. I call oh. it an adult movie, like R-rated. Like is catered. Dude, imagine Freddy. There's got to be one out there. Home video. <laughs> yeah. That's your pizza right here. But yeah, I mean, like you just. <laughs> this is going down a different path. <laughs> well, when you said adult movie, that's all I could think of. I think he was saying that uh, this one, A Nightmare on Elm Street, is more oh. adult because it's like really yeah. rated our stuff, you know. And then, you know, like I was saying earlier, Freddy Krueger becomes this comedy figure. Yeah, you know? yeah. he really does. He becomes com a comedian. I hate in that. A way. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't become scary anymore. And to Dan's point, it becomes it. more acceptable for kids. Yeah. But. It becomes more commercialized and, you know, you can put them in commercials and selling mm -hmm. merchandise and having TV shows and doing all this other crap because like, oh, well, here he is, you know. Yeah. Like, it was even a little shocking as I was going back on YouTube watching some of the old Freddy commercials, just being like. There was only so many channels back uh, back when we were younger, and they, these would play on the channel, like on loops in between shows. You'd have Freddy Krueger with knives in hand showing up on your TV with clips of the movie and yeah. everything like that. And that was not an uncommon thing, yeah. like to see him on ABC, CBS, like those kind of stations. Like, imagine other horror movie icons like doing that. I think Freddy I would can't even imagine. Yeah, yeah I think so I think yeah. Freddy like works for it because, like you said like he became a comedy character yeah. but like even in like the original like you know he was still kind of like you know playing around and kind of like doing his own thing and i think <clears throat> like for me when horror becomes more of a comedy like there were some funny moments in this movie i think obviously there was some a couple lines that really got me the one thing i really like is when obviously like, it's a it's a terrible scene to watch but tina's death and <laughs> when she's flailing around the room and she, and and Rod she hits get, Rod, yeah. I died <laughs> laughing because it was so like quick. I was like, God damn. There are, I think so there funny. are some unintentionally funny scenes. Like, <laughs> like when he gets lit, lit up by the, uh, the gunpowder. Yeah, the, the gunpowder bowl oh, yeah. or like the, uh, got the sledgehammer so, to him. I still yeah. think him running up the stairs on fire yeah, and then yeah. falling and then running back up the stairs again. Him it's like falling down the stairs though, yeah. like when he gets hit with the hammer and then falls down. Yes, like, that too. It was a comedy at the end, but I it's love it. It's very Home Alone-esque. Yeah. Hey, 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 speaking of that, Logan, real quick, are they still teaching traps and ensnarement class in, in <laughs> high school? Because, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. They taught it back when we were younger, but because, you know, like uh, graduates like Kevin McAllister and this, you know, she's got like this whole like sophisticated trap, like Rambo, Rambo-esque setup. Where the she's got, fuck like, did wires. she get gunpowder? Well, uh, like, where did she learn the how mother. to do any of this stuff? <laughs> that mother's the, an alcoholic. I don't California think California suburban. It. Like, I, it, well, I mean, we didn't have the internet back then, so we had to. I mean, is she the ultimate final girl? Like, she. she I mean, made I want her. I want her on my team. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. She's, she's, you know, she was, she was, she was, she was stringing those trip wires like a pro. <laughs> Till the end. Her and Happy the bartender, yeah. just like <laughs> together. That's a. I that's don't a know, dream man. Team. Dream team. I wouldn't want her on my team because she felt very despondent about like the deaths that happened in this movie like when glenn died she was just like okay now i gotta go kill freddy like she wasn't yeah, like she wanted vengeance and yeah. then when her mother died she was like mother mother mommy 
Oh, yeah, no. she didn't seem like she missed her as much. No. There's a, there seemed to be some how the, so, there. how the hell did the mother get custody over her? She's <laughs> an alcoholic and a soap opera level actor. <laughs> yeah, actress. I mean, like, and, and there's there's some very interesting overtones to this movie that I only picked up on this watch through. To be honest with you, there's the the overtones of like the adults not being fantastic people yeah. that yeah. that I picked up on. I didn't really pick up on that a lot in the past, but you know, I, her parents are divorced. Not, not that being divorced makes you not a fantastic person. I'm just saying like they're, you know, they're clearly, they're kind of hurt people. Yeah. So it, 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 the, they the have adults faults. are hurt people. Yeah. But one of the things that, that surprised me is as I was watching this and I picked up on it is there's kind of a, there's a little bit, and maybe there is and there isn't a little bit of a morality angle uh, to this. I mean, this was nice. 1984 so you know this is this is the time for this kind of stuff but notice how like glenn and nancy they didn't sleep together but tina and ron and did, Ron did. And, yeah you know, my and, poor guy couldn't get couldn't get some like twice like he he was that was a tough scene to watch for glenn at, at that sleep yeah you know? morality sucks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he had to listen to them have but sex there, there was like the, that morality angle and like and, and, and like one of the things that I had tr trouble deciphering as we were going through the movie is, is like, I don't think that like crucifixes or anything, those don't seem to have any effect on Freddy. Nah. He knocks it right off the wall. He seems to be mo almost like a religious, like he's not like, he's not like a religious entity of any That's sort. That's a good point too. And they didn't have a religious focus in this movie other than her grabbing the crucifix yeah but it maybe that's more like grabbing onto uh hope or something like that yeah like, uh, yeah you know tr goodwill i don't know but like you're right there was no real focus on religion in this too uh-huh which maybe makes it scarier. I don't know. Like there's yeah, because because Freddy, you know, nothing can protect yeah, you. Yeah, what's or protecting maybe you from Freddy? Freddy's inside of you or something, or yeah. is your like subconscious, Ooh. like animalistic? Uh, you know, let's go Carl Jung on this thing. Like uh, <laughs> you know, like he like like Freddy's your your your, your subconscious, your subconscious like, horror yeah. or the subconscious like the the collective psychic guilt that has been brought up because they went and the, the parents went and killed this guy who you know everybody knew did it and they you know vigilante justice but and, and then one more thing i'll say on this it just just it just has to do with glenn's death glenn's death he gets sucked down into the sheets and then spurts cut you know spurts come up that was nocturnal emissions i mean <laughs> i don't know he seems to you know the morality he's been sleeping on the couch for a while oh, there. I'm just man. Saying. <laughs> poor glenn that's the only relief he got yeah. <laughs> Interesting takes, but uh, I was going to actually add on to your part about like him being godless or whatever. Yeah. Uh, in Tina's dream in the beginning, she says something to the effect of like she just says out loud like "Oh God" or something like that. She and says, "Please, please God, God. yes, and, thank you." Yeah. And he's like, "This is God." This is God. Yeah, and his hand, and his claw. So yeah, like God doesn't exist, but maybe the devil does. Kind of uh, yeah situation. Yeah. But in terms of themes too, like I kind of picked up on some themes as well. My thought was there's this ex existential dread and fear of growing up into nothingness. Uh -huh. We dream for a better tomorrow, but there's no guarantee it'll be there waiting for us. The teens are very much experiencing this existential threat. That is Freddy Krueger. And the adults treat them like they're overreacting. The parents say they took care of Krueger. Their actions have only made it worse for their kids. And they actively ignore their children's existential threats and are too wrapped up in their own world to notice it. The adults in the movie, they don't really have any character development. They're kind of just archetypes of authority. Archetypes of authority that the kids interact around, be it like police officers, teachers, parents, doctors... It's like back to like our exorcist episode where we were discussing about like the material knowledge not being enough to help Reagan. But with Nightmare, it's all the authority in the material world that maintains order is ineffective in its purpose of safeguarding the dreams of children. I think that's pretty valid. It's one of those movies that, at least on the surface level, I like watching, especially when I was younger, because it was like 
the younger people in this movie are really the ones that are, yeah. you know, in charge of their fate and what's going to happen to them and empowering themselves. You know, like you were saying with Nancy and the traps, you know, she had to rely on herself. Her and Glenn talk about the dreams and it's all about these younger people figuring out what's wrong and how we can stop this or how we can come together. And the adults being completely ineffectual the, to help. The yes. mother like is usual. more of a child than Nancy is. Yes. Yeah. And there's a scene where she's even talking her mother in the bed. Yeah, you know? Again, how did the mother get custody? Uh, you got a valid point. I don't know. The dad seems more like an actual <laughs> parent, except that he used her. Judicial system. <laughs> <laughs> He did. He did <laughs> use his daughter to get Rod. So yeah, I forgot about that. He he follows Nancy to school to capture Rod there with the. Yeah. Uh, I like know, how he's yeah. like, "Why are you going to school anyway?" Yeah, <laughs> like it's a valid point. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I blame him for that. Yeah, I mean, so from, his, from his cop point of view, that guy sliced and diced a girl up and, and then <laughs> left. And then left. <laughs> Let's talk about the slicing and dicing because it, it, one of the coolest things ever is Freddy's glove. Is it oh, not? Oh yeah, I mean, it's like uh, that's an like iconic weapon. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's one of those things it's worthless. That, as yeah, in real life. But. What I had read <laughs> is originally they were gonna do like a sickle for his weapon. Yeah, you know. But this is just like we said, iconic. You know. And did you catch the in the the making of the movie bit like where Wes Craven got the idea for the finger glove from? Was a cat, right? It was from his cat. Yeah, flexing his uh, flexing his her paw out. Did it ever bother anybody that his thumb never had a blade on it? Maybe this is just a symmetry thing with me, but like the fact that he only had four <laughs> fingers. <laughs> Get the fifth one out. <laughs> they actually is that, is that just me on the other? <laughs> They actually had made two prototype gloves for the movie. One had legit sharp knives on it, right? Uh -huh. And that was used in a lot of scenes. But there was another one that was like the stunt glove that had the dull knives. Uh, according Don't to mix those up. well, according to Heather Langenkamp, <laughs> they did a couple of times. Oh no! And the famous one was where it's coming up through the bath bathtub. Bathtub. Oh no! But in fairness, I was reading that they wanted to use the the real knives because it was so close to the camera. Yeah, that's that, a good call. Yeah, you it, needed it would that. Tell, that yeah. it, give give it that away. That is one probably one of if you want to say something that like the idea of like sitting in a tub and then a hand coming up yes. with knives attached to it. I was just saying that like yeah, when we were watching that, it. That's a terrifying image. Like when we were watching it, I never watched Nightmare before uh Nightmare like any of the movies like before this, but I knew of that scene. Yeah. Because like uh, I will say Freddy wasn't really talked about. But that was yeah the like scenes. the 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 scenes of this movie definitely were talking about, and that one was definitely one that was spoken about. Well, when we were watching it, right, they would come up on the death scenes, like um, Tina's scene, and I'm like talking to Logan, like this is an iconic scene, you know? Yeah. She's dragged across the ceiling. You can't see Freddy. You know, Rod finally wakes up like, holy shit, man, I would have oh, yeah. been awake like that, yeah. you know, screaming and shit. He uh, finally wakes up. How do up. people not like these people are like screaming yeah. like banshees screaming in the dude's ear. <laughs> like, right hey, next Rod, to Rod, like, is, uh, there's multiple scenes in this sleeper. movie where people are screaming in their sleep. And how are people not across the neighborhood? Like, yeah, what like the what, fuck is going, going on? Can I, can I also just jump in there? Like, the fact that the mom never wakes up during, yeah, like, the booby like, trap scene <laughs> in, the, in the exploding light bulb. Like, she's yeah, dead asleep. Yeah, but I mean, that could have been brought to you by vodka. That was alcohol. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I was thinking. They used the uh, alcohol as a plot device yeah. there. Oh, 100%. baby, I'm going to go to sleep. Good that's shit. I, just put him I, just down. Thought, I just thought it was crazy. Like, there's all these cops and stuff across the, the window. And she's breaking out windows of the house, like, screaming. And all the cops are like, oh, I wonder what's going she's on like, over there. She's like, get my dad, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that get scene him. was so good. I love that where he's like, what's oh, going what's on good? over there? And she's like, get my dad, you asshole. <laughs> like, it's just so good. Like, finally getting somebody there. Yeah, man. And every scene, like we were saying, too, with the, the glove coming up through the bathtub, I'm like, oh, here's an iconic scene. Yep. Glenn's death in the in the bed. I'm like, oh, here's an iconic scene. You know, Freddie pulls off his face. 
Yes, awesome. and the skeleton, like skeletal features. Yeah. Oh my god, here's an iconic scene. It was like every thing was, when you, need them. you know. I'm like, oh, you know, when you think about this, man, it really is a movie of iconic scenes. And what about like this? Like, and and one thing I would be remiss to not mention is like the music. I yes. love the music. Yeah. I, I love the music more this time that I watch yeah. it. I feel like just that, like it was almost John Carpenter esque, yeah, but synth- it was a little synth yep. going on and stuff. But I it was really, it. it was like a weird like synth wave, and I, I've been listening to a lot of synth waves as I've been working <laughs> as of late. But like it was just very like very cool music and and very of the time. You oh know? yeah. And, and this whole movie to me, and I don't know whether anybody else got the feel of this, and of course the end kind of it kind of. Makes to think about this this whole movie felt a little dreamlike to me did that mm-hmm. did anybody else feel yeah. that like even yes. when we weren't supposed to be in the dream it, it felt, felt like felt a, a little bit like it was in the dream well it's it's almost like they they kind of kept that magic in the bottle yeah. so to speak so that you were never sure when they were going to transition it mm-hmm. yes. in and yes. out yeah a hundred percent and it's done so well because you're almost questioning throughout is this real life yeah especially the ending especially the ending but like i think like to dan's point they they do it so well and keep that magic in the bottle and never ever give you signs of real life or not real life you know dream world or not dream world and it's done perfectly you know i had read too that originally the freddy krueger character was meant to be this big hulking guy yeah, so I'm glad they didn't go that yeah. direction. And actually, it's funny because Kane Hodder, who plays Jason famously in some of them, actually had auditioned to play Freddy. Huh. I just had a vision of Arnold Schwarzenegger as Freddy Krueger. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, but this welcome to my God. nightmare. Now that you see Robert England, I mean, he is Freddy Krueger. You know, the other thing that isn't talked about is originally the Freddy Krueger character was supposed to be a child molester. Oh, not just a child killer. Not just a child oh, killer. Oh, he's got depth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there was some publicized child molest molestation cases that occurred in California around the same time. So that... I think it's a great thing to remove that from yeah, the equation. Just have him be a lunatic killer, right. not there, a pedophile. Yes, yeah. there are some sexual undertones with, you know, like, yeah. I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. Yeah, the, and, I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. The tongue coming out uh, of the phone. Well, yeah. maybe they can do a remake and have Diddy play uh, Freddy Krueger. Oh, oh, too soon. I mean, they, they had Jackie Earl Haley kind of do that oh. already. But. <laughs> Do you want to hear a crazy story? So Jackie Early Haley, right, played Freddy Krueger in the remake. Yep. In the original auditions for this movie, Johnny Depp was friends with Jackie Early Haley. And okay. Jackie Early Haley brought Johnny Depp with him to set. Johnny Depp really didn't want to audition for this movie. <laughs> That's pretty I, awesome. I, I, yeah, I just think Johnny Depp is so interesting in this movie because he's so like clean cut and preppy and like Wes Craven's and, and, daughters were the reason why Wes Craven picked Johnny Depp for this movie. Oh, I, I wonder see. why Johnny Depp hadn't been in a movie before. They saw his headshot and Wes Craven was thinking about him, and they're like, "Dad, come on, look at him." <laughs> look at him, and he was like, "Boom." You're going to be a guy that sleeps on the couch while two people have sex upstairs. You're going to have very, very little lines. Yep, and, and you are going to sleep most of this movie. Yeah, <laughs> sleeping is going to be your, your primary objective, and uh, we're also going to chew you up and spit you out from yeah. your bed. We're going to kill you very brutally, and he was like, oh, I'm down. <laughs> what I thought was cool, too, with Freddy Krueger, it was named after Wes Craven's bully from school. Oh, he also, Wes Craven is known for this movie, Last House on the Left, as well. There's a character in that called Krug. So he, he has <laughs> wow. used this name Real creativity in there. Movies. But the red and green sweater, do you know where that came from at all? It's uh, basically the red and green are the two hardest colors for your corneas to process. 
So that's why they used it because when putting them together, it makes it almost disorienting. Yep, a hundred percent. Yep, and I guess Fun West fact Craven. Of the day. West Craven had read that in a uh, magazine or a book, I believe. Oh, so geez. that's why they they use those nerd. Oh. It's just so wild, like how his mind works. How he like just grabs these little like nuanced facts from here there and everywhere and like kind of comes like this ball of wax that is freddy krueger it's it's kind of crazy too because he didn't want to be a horror director or writer at all he wanted to do different pictures (laughs) and he became pretty synonymous with horror he wanted to make him have a female wig on for like the remainder of the movie and that was like the big thing he wanted freddy to become (laughs) we're talking about wes craven yeah Yeah. why not let's just i feel like with a lot of these horror movie franchises they always change how they're supposed to look like we've always seen it in halloween halloween the original was like, you know, this white mask with Michael Myers. And then in Halloween 4, it was like, hey, let's make him look as shitty as possible. Well, yeah, I mean, eventually in this franchise, the oh, look I'm guessing and so. character of Freddy does change. That's why when Wes Craven... I know Wes Craven came back for Dream Warriors, I believe. Yeah, part three. Yeah, but when he had full control of doing A New Nightmare, that's when he was like, no, we're bringing Freddy back to like his original... Concept, well, that's a good idea. You know, and what the, I had for him. The original, like, look of Freddy just looks, like, really well done. Like, when you first see him, like, in this movie, I was like, oh, now we got our... Now we're cooking. Now we're, like, let him cook, you know? I, I want to say just, like, one thing about... Uh, Bear Claw was touching upon it, the uh, the music in this movie. I really enjoyed the music. I was thinking about it, but I'm like, man, if I was in this dream, man, I'd be bumping my head to this theme. <laughs> like, if this is playing in the oh, background, yeah. I'd be like, hey, Freddie, you guys... I must have fall asleep at my workstation. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, it's so good. Like, And I like how whenever you hear it, it's whenever, like, something is in a dream mm-hmm. or when Freddie is ever on screen. Like, those are the only two times it ever is heard. Other than that, it's the same like two songs every time <laughs> a quick question for you logan did you find it scary like, like were there yes. moments that you found like because I, I think this is of the nightmare on elm street or freddy yeah you know this is definitely the, the most terrifying the I, coming from a modern eye which i i can't see it yeah. through you know i i was kind of curious to see whether you, it was still it still kind of held up as scary yeah, I mean, it's not scary to me. Like, I wouldn't use that word. It is a little chilling, though. Like, that's the word I would use. Like, I was thinking that where I was like, man, these deaths are just brutal and, like, awful to just witness. Like, and I love how I love how the people react to them, too, because, like, they're not just, like, one and done, like, okay, we're just going to kill you off kind of things. People react to their deaths, and each time it's, like, more and more terrifying. When Tina dies... You just see it through Rod's eyes. Just this, like, what is going on? Yeah, right. And that is exactly how you're feeling. Like, you are seeing this person levitating, being, like, ripped to shreds and just bleeding out all over the place. Like, it is terrifying. And then when you see Rod's death in the prison, like, obviously, by him hanging, I was like, man, this is... That really pissed me off because I'm like, man, Rod got it by Freddy, and they're going to think he hung himself. Yeah. yeah. And it was, like, perfect because I'm like, that's exactly what you want. You want it, You want that kind of unsettling kind of death and then obviously the ending with like glenn dying going into the hole like a (laughs) like an allison chain song being put out with all the blood over the place like it was just oh my god to your point there aren't a lot of deaths in this movie but those three are good but they're so impactful yeah they really are you know and memorable and iconic you know it's crazy to think about that this movie originally was considered that Disney was going to pick this movie up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to get you, Freddy. They wanted it to be a PG-13 movie, and Wes Craven was like, eh, that's not going to work. Yeah, we're not doing that. The what knife-handed child us? killer is really going to hurt the PG-13 <laughs> rating that comes to you in your dreams. So we're going we're gonna to have you put some some waffle cones on your on your fingers instead of the finger glove. Now. Par- Paramount <laughs> also turned this down, and I guess Wes Craven actually got a letter from them, and he framed it and kept it in his house that basically cool. said like hey we're not gonna go with this but <laughs> new line cinema finally <laughs> to pick this movie up 
And New Line Cinema had Bob Shea, who was the producer. And basically, this movie would have not taken place if it wasn't for Bob Shea. Bob Shea, like, put all his money he had. The studio gave him, like, what? It was, like, $850,000. And then that guy had, like, the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah, including the end where they weren't going to get the final release because they hadn't paid for that print. And Bob Shea had to figure out a way to pay it so they could get the money you know no this, business like show business <laughs> new line cinema really was the house that freddie built because what happened after man was crazy you know yeah. they they really got their money's worth out of it it works oh, yeah. in new line though because like if it wasn't i mean i wouldn't like imagine it without because like imagine if this was a disney thing and you saw like the disney thing before the movie started i'm just like, picturing them workshopping it with disney like instead of knives what are our thoughts on like maybe corn dogs like <laughs> <laughs> what are our thoughts with some mouse ears and maybe yeah. just maybe a goofy kind of voice you know what, Bear Claw, though, to your point, some of the newer Freddy movies in the franchise, they use uh-huh. more like special effects and things like yeah, that. Yeah, they had more budget for sure. But it also doesn't come off as good I to me. Practical. Nothing, nothing is going to be practical effects. Yeah. No. You know, I, I, that, that's my, that that is always my take. You can do CGI and you know oh. what? It'll look okay, but it's never going to look as good as practical effects. CGI Just sucks. Just no way. The fact that they constructed an entire room that rotated, like, <laughs> yes. yeah, like it manually rotated it with like rods and like that's what they used for Tina's death, Tina's death scene and Johnny and, Depp's, and right? Johnny Depp's yeah. scene with like one just Blind. the ingenuity of that. <laughs> and then also like the uh, the scene where he like he po- he pokes through the wall yeah. and yeah. knocks a crucifix over. All that is, is a it's just a frame with spandex pressed in the middle of it. And all he does is presses his face up against the spandex, yeah. and it creates that effect how just with the shadow that? and the it's lighting. so well done. Yeah, it's so that's well done. That's another scene that's very iconic. Did yeah, and I, you know what, though? Like, that's, to me, that's why this still holds up 40 oh, yeah. years later, 40 years later. It still looks, later. like, amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just a piece of spandex. Right. Just press your face against this spandex right. in the dark, and we'll, we'll catch the lighting the did, right way. Did any of you guys watch any of those, like, special effects, like, TV shows, or, like, they used to play them where you'd, like, go behind the yeah, movie. Yeah, like, behind the scenes, behind like, the, the movie scenes, magic or something. Before you had, like, this is this is back in the VHS days, before you had, like, uh, DVD specials or anything like that. You had these shows where you could, where uh, and, and, and let me know, uh, why don't you drop me a line at the padded room at outlook.com and tell me, if you remember that those like Hollywood FX yeah. TV shows or it would go through like how they did some of this stuff. Uh, a lot of it was very horror movies because horror movies have a lot usually it, have yeah. a lot of special effects. But let me know. Practical is better. You know what? I got to ask a big question on here because really? I really I enjoyed this movie tremendously. My biggest gripe against this movie is the ending. Absolutely. Yeah, I was not a fan of the ending. What were your thoughts on the ending? I mean, t- how, my would, qu- how would you have ended it? But then? here's my question, right? Because, you know, I, I got an ending the, for you. The ending was pretty controversial between Bob Shea and Wes Craven. Wes Craven wanted to end it a certain way, but Bob Shea wanted to guarantee that the audience knew that Freddie would be coming back. And something I had seen in that documentary, Dan, I don't know if you had seen it, was the unreleased clip of when they get in the car at the end, it was going to be Nancy gets in and then she looks over to Glenn, but Glenn isn't there and it's Freddie who's in the driver's seat. Oh, that would have been good. And Freddie drives away. Wes Craven didn't want to do that. He thought it was like too on the nose or whatever. Uh Nah. He had the idea of them driving away in the car and the convertible top is the same color as Freddy's sweater. They're not in control. You see the girls jump roping, right? And he wanted to just end it like that. Yeah. Bob Shea convinced him to do the scene where the mother gets grabbed through the little (laughs) window. But it made no sense. Uh Yeah, it didn't fit with the movie. I mean, is this a dream within a dream? What's going on? I think so. It's trippy. For me, it's my least favorite part. It takes Wes's established rules on Freddy and it says, we're going to retcon all that and say it was all a dream and establish new rules in the films going forward. And they ended up doing that every single time going forward. It almost became the formula for all the other movies that came after it, where like they they would establish the lore in the movie and then by the end of it, 
just tear that wall up and throw it out and just uh, say, oh, don't forget got about something it. Something new for the next uh, time. Something else happened. But <laughs> for this to be a dream, like within a dream, within a dream, let's let's backtrack. Okay, so if this is a dream within a dream, yeah, we're going back to like the are night. You gonna, are you going to do an entire Inception? Uh, yes. Re- yes. Redo of the. Can you, can you get my top out? Can, spin it. Spin the top. Kevin, get the tops. Get, get the totems. Yeah. Bear claw. I'm going to need you to do the music. Acapella. Dream. <laughs> It's so good. But if get your music, if she's going to sleep to pull him out of a dream, mm-hmm. and you're going to tell me that when she does that, that is actually a dream, and then she wakes up, and like it's the end where like she's leaving with her. That's also a dream. <laughs> so she pulled him out of a dream that she was already in a dream with into that dream world, and. It, you, you just you made see? Inception look. Do you see? Like, do you see? Dude, do you see what the, this, the problem is? This is the scene with Charlie, or the famous uh, meme with Charlie Day and the built bulletin board <laughs> and trying to like. Pepe I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, like it's got me rambling on about I, like. I is, hear it, you. Is, is you just please take the mic. <laughs> I, I just, I just don't think this was the way to end this movie. No. I thought it was a good. I thought it was a good way to end the movie. I don't know how. I don't know how else he would have ended it besides this. I probably, if I had a vote at it, I probably would have had the Freddy just putting on sunglasses or something and driving away. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, because I thought the top was a little was a little bit like, and you saw it, and and it, it, it had its effect. I think that was. I think that was the middle of the road. I think there were some better uh, endings, but I, it being in a dream and you know her ending up having failed, and I think that's. I thought that was good. I mean, uh, what what are the all other alternatives that she actually? Succeeded? But how did she? Wh- why? Why did she fail? Why did she fail? You how did kill she? Freddy. How did she fail though? You can't kill Freddy. Are you gonna drag him into the real world? But they you... just showed that that she did. But it was a she dream. Knew a secret. In a dream. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess I just don't know. So because that, that's my thing is is okay. She pulls him into the real world. Then what? I got your it's answer. It's home alone time. Then yeah. it's home alone time, right? But like. Uh, you, so you're gonna kill a dead man, a dream. Well, man. Nancy he wanted his ass. Nancy wanted her dad to arrest him. And I want you to be there to arrest him when I bring him out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what yeah. would that have okay, looked so like? What would that have looked like? Oh shit! Uh, did we ass. burn you in the, in the, in the shed? Yeah. What, what, the, what the hell was that scene though with the mom in the bed? Like, what did that even like? Oh god, yeah. Like, I know. I didn't like. Really that didn't. Scene. Yeah, like, I didn't like that scene yeah. either. Like, what the no. what the hell that happened? She got pulled down to like into the bed. I thought I thought like ninety nine percent of strip was amazing, and then like the other ten is just like third that like last ten minutes. You're like, no, what are you doing? Well, I I kind of think that the idea behind that, and I knew as soon as the mom melted into the bed kind of situation that like. Oh, they're still in a dream at mm-hmm. that point. I, I that's kind of what that. That's a good point. To me, yeah, that's a good is point. like oh, they think they're out of the dream. They're not out of the that's dream. That's a good point. They're they're still good. In yeah, the dream. actually, if they, if they were ever out of the dream, keep in mind. I gotta say that actually makes me like it better. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I'm like, yeah. well, what? Like this wouldn't happen if this is the real world we're in. Yeah. Why would she disappear into the bed? You know, I do like. But in a nightmare, your mother disappearing in the bed makes a lot of sense. I do like the scene where Freddy comes out of it later. Yeah. And she turns her back on Freddy. I thought that was that was cool and cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and he was like trembling. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, oh, don't do that. Right. Like I thought that was cool. My last question here is, where do we go from here with Freddy? Where's the future? Well, we of the know what Nightmare we're franchise. Well, since I didn't make any other movies, I think they should follow. No. <laughs> <laughs> since you know there's not another movie, maybe do another I think movie. It's time for a revival, no. a musical. Yeah. I think it is time. I honestly, I think you could probably do it. I, I would yeah, watch you could. Of, uh, yeah, you could. Yeah, I'm a hundred percent in. We need Freddie back. Get, I'm get sorry. Broadway yeah. on the horn right now. <laughs> Nathan, uh, 2026. This is, this is where release. it starts. We're writing Freddie the musical. <laughs> I just think I just think it's been it's I'm been gonna put my cat eyes in I'm going for gas. <laughs> it's been a long enough where the Freddy franchise has been dormant. It's time to bring him back cuz like to Logan's point, what they did with it in Pennywise, it made Pennywise scary for his 
generation of kids. Now, why can't they do that with Freddy and do it right? Not like what they did in, what was it, 2010 with Jackie Early Haley, who I think is a great actor. And, I, you know, I don't Just mind his bad part. Movie. Just a bad movie. Right. I think it's hard to do a Freddy movie because the rules of Freddy are very in between. You know, like we don't know the secrets of Freddy in the original. They're giving us like little hints like, oh yeah, you can pull him out of a dream, but also aren't you in that dream? And also like there's secrets to be had, but he ain't gonna tell you those secrets. Oh, and also I gotta say, we're we're skipping a part of it. The mother Very like hung up on the mother. The mother <laughs> well there's that a, was his favorite there's in the a movie. scene there's a scene that no one real the daughter doesn't really talk about or anything is that she like tells her I killed a person. Took gasoline, poured it all around the place, and made a trail of it out the door. Then lit the whole thing up and watched it burn. <laughs> <laughs> And it's kind of like, dude. it's kind of like Michael Caine in The Dark Knight when he's telling Bruce about how he killed a, how he burned a village full of people. And he's like, well, you had to do what you had to do. Like, what? No. Like, and well, like, I mean, a little different here. There's some nuances like, you know, he murdered 20 children. I know, but like, <laughs> it still doesn't make it right. You killed a person. Here, here's my question. Why did she keep the claw? Yeah, that I don't know. Uh, Memories. And she must have never. She must have <laughs> never turned that furnace on either. Because what? Well, why wouldn't she burn it then? Evidence. Um, can you really burn a metal claw? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you could burn it down, but you'd have to get some like really illicit tools. So I don't know. I maybe, think the mother's a little drunk. Maybe, maybe there's another backstory here where she was like in love with Freddie. Yeah, and like uh, didn't the know fun? that he was killing children. Right. She was, hooked up with Freddie, uh, and that's what led the to the divorce. And now yeah. Nancy's Freddy's daughter? daughter? Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Wow. Hey, wow. This is... A24. This Give A24. us a call. A24. We're going to need you to call no. us about... Don't ruin A24. Little, uh, Broadway. Broadway's going to need to call us. And Broadway, too. Hello. I am Freddy, and you are my daughter. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to bathe in your blood. <laughs> I'm going to kill some kids, and I get burned alive. But I think the ending, I just want to touch upon that because I have an ending for you, Bear Claw, because you're saying about okay. how you don't know how to do okay. the ending. Hit me with your ending. I Let's got an ending it. for you, and I've been thinking about this, and I was thinking about this throughout the movie, is what if the ending kind of did exactly what the beginning had? You know, the beginning had Tina obviously be being killed by Freddy and Rod kind of being blamed for the death of Tina, obviously running away. And I was thinking, what if you do the final battle Glenn and Nancy battling Freddy Krueger with all the stuff going on and Freddy Krueger gets back at Nancy and that's when Glenn sacrifices himself to stop Freddy and like they go out in like a blaze of glory you know like burned or whatever yeah. and Nancy like holds like Glenn's body as the police come inside and see the entire place on fire with Nancy holding him and they're just like that is how you end it just like a dark ending and then as the police come in the house is just like put up like in the camera like Camera's you see pulling away from yeah, the house and all you hear is the laughter of freddy with so, like the burning like, sound essentially like the halloween yeah uh, what is it the, the the rob zombie halloween ending with the the because isn't that kind of how it was yeah a little bit a I little bit like, fra like freddy ends up framing nancy for all oh, the, for, for all, all of this killing. like yeah. okay yeah i mean that'd be interesting she was going a little crazy and you know like that could be like the big thing into the second one like nancy was yeah the real freddy i mean Krueger. that would have definitely set up kind of an interesting sequel you know because yeah. like is she in a mental institution no one steal that freddy. if i ever become a director i'm <laughs> hey, kind of like what, three <laughs> <laughs> Maybe maybe we another movie. Two. Maybe I, another movie with uh, some warriors in a dream. I, I'm talking. I'm already. I'm already calling Julie Taymor about the musical rights of this. So. <laughs> Let's do it. So what can we do? <laughs> well, it's now time for our favorite segment: hook, line, and stinker. For hook. Hook is our favorite kill. Our favorite line is line, which is a quote or line from the movie. Our stinker is our favorite stinker, which is something 
funny, weird, strange that terrible. happens terrible during the movie that either makes it better or worse. Mostly worse. My hook is Tina's death. I love it. It's yeah, it's terrible. It's iconic. It's terrifying. Oh, I love that. It's the room. We know that they turn the room upside down, but like when you're watching it, it looks like she's legit being dragged across the ceiling, asking for help. Rod wakes up. He can't see Freddy. He only sees her, just a bloody mess. We see the claw marks on her chest. She gets her Rod gets whipped <laughs> by Tina's body that was flinging so around. Funny. She finally falls in the bed, blood everywhere. You know, and even when they come into the room later, it's just it's horrifying. There's blood everywhere. Things are everywhere. I mean, it was great. Maybe not great, but for her, but it was <laughs> it was great for it you. Turned yeah. quite, it turned out quite poorly for her, but <laughs> my line is one that Dan touched on earlier. Tina and Freddie squaring off. Tina says, please, God. And Freddie says, this is God. And, you know, kind of my second favorite line is, is I do love the girls singing the song. One, yes, two, two Freddie's coming for you. I thought that was very creepy and iconic. Uh, my stinker is going after Logan's heart on this. Anything that Nancy's mom is involved with. I don't think it's my heart. I think I agree <laughs> with you. She just, she, her performance to me stuck out a little bit in this, like a sore <laughs> thumb. Like she seemed very soap opera-esque. Her line delivery, like, oh, I'm going to get her some help. Like it that was, was just, the funniest thing. Yeah, it was just very weird delivery, very weird lines, the way yeah. she was going off. So for me, that's my stinker. Dan, what about you? All right. Well, my hook is Glenn's death. Mm. That shit yeah. is amazing. Yep. Just getting pulled into into his bed and then getting ocean sprayed up into the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Ocean yeah. sprayed. His, I love his mom it. Mom watching the entire thing happen. It's great. I love when the uh Nancy's dad comes in too later and he's like, Well, where's the coroner? And this other cop's like in the jaw and puking since he saw it. He's in the bathroom throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna yeah. talk about the other line that the guy said. You won't need a stretcher, you'll need a bop and bucket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Like this kid just died and you're making jokes. Like you are terrible. More importantly, I I, I didn't really like the character Glenn. I thought he was a pretty useless character. Oh, and don't I'm, say I'm, that. I'm glad that he got the coolest death out of everybody because I mean, that made him he's good. the perfect cannon fodder in that case. Actually, I take that back. Glenn was very useful here. Line, Miss Nude America is going to be on tonight. <laughs> Glenn's mom, how can you hear what she's saying? Who cares what she says? Who cares what she's saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the 80s. <laughs> and like, I, I thought that was Still so now. <laughs> funny. It's just uh, like, it's just hilarious, like troll line. That's just like trolling like the sleazy nature of like 80s media. Uh -huh. But also kind of going back to my point on like the theme of this detachment of like adults and their children. It's like the ultimate disassociation. Your kid just got through saying like, I'm going to watch Miss like Nude America or whatever. And you're like, your response is like, well, how can you hear them? Yeah. Not like, right. why, why the fuck are Everybody you watching? Everybody had TVs in the room. My parents never let me have a TV in my room. I had a small, small TV. Like, I, have a I, I had a TV, TV in my room, too. I have a TV in my room. Like a 13-inch one, 15-inch one. I got a 24 But, like, I don't know, just, like, that complete detachment, right. too. Right. I really wrote a musical now. But, uh... <laughs> about your life or about Nightmare? Both. <laughs> Combining them. <laughs> Freddie met me when I was just a child. <laughs> Uh, and stinker, I have the arm stretching scene as my stinker. Oh, you don't uh, like that, Freddy with the arms no, in the alley? No, I like that. <laughs> because so of all the practical effects they did, that's the one that just doesn't hold up yeah. the best. It hurt for me. It just like it hurts the tone and the atmosphere of that scene. Like it just almost kind of makes it cartoonish right there in that moment mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. me. So that's. That that's for me is the stinker is like anytime a 
a practical effect didn't quite land. How about you, Bear Claw? So my hook was, of course, Johnny Depp's uh, nocturnal emission there. Oh, as, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Ocean Spray. Too soon, he, finally, he finally got a little release, so that was good. <laughs> but just, just you know, the, the it's swirling on the ceiling, and I mean, just, I mean, that is just absolutely fantastic. And, and we've talked about it, but that is just an iconic kill. The line also, my heart went out for Glenn, because Glenn really, uh, <laughs> Glenn really got the shaft in this movie the lines uh morality sucks as he's down on the couch i thought was yeah. a good one and then oh man you know he gets a call from his his significant other who you know is clearly going through something and glenn has not seen anything too crazy at this point and you know she's telling him that he's got to be ready to wake her up with a baseball bat and like ready to yeah. tango with some like dream serial killer and i feel like glenn takes that in a good stride when he says you know oh man midnight baseball bats and boogeyman Beautiful. <laughs> like, just like, oh, this is like, that's what his night's gonna. So I thought that was a funny line. I mean, there's a bunch of classic yeah. lines, but that that was that was one that stuck out, you know, in the in the phone, and I'm your boyfriend now, and the tongue yeah, coming out of the phone. Yeah, I great. wonder if that was done any other time. I wonder if that, you know, if you think about how far back did that go? Did that start with Billy and Black Christmas, and that because Billy's tongue never came out of the phone, but right. his metaphorical, tongue you know, out tongue come out came out of the phone. The stinker to me in this movie, and it always kind of rang a little bit of a different tone, is just when the main character goes all home alone. Like yeah. it's very out of character. She seems no, like, just like. A, <laughs> she, she seems like just a normal girl, and she's setting up trip wires and hammers. And Freddie you know, turned her uh, into a monster. Turned, man. Uh, now he's turning us into monsters. Yeah, well, it sounds. It seems like she was preparing to be what a monster been, for some time. What a bad birthday they with my just, ending. Uh, it, you know, it was just one of those things that she just triggered but just the whole like um you know home alone aspect of it uh even though this was many many years before home alone i i just thought that was a little bit uh that took me out of it just a touch but right. just a touch but yeah that, that's uh that's it for me hook line and sinker for hook i would say you know there's only really two we're not going to talk about uh, Nancy's mother's death. You know, that was a good, yeah. that was a man. That probably could have been a stinker. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. No, it's, it, for me, it's got to be Glenn's, because that one really yeah, I, struck at me. Like, Tina's one was bad, but Glenn's one really was like, holy crap, like, what are we witnessing right now? And that really just, like, brought me into the movie. Like, there was multiple times in this movie where I was like, ah, I'm not really into this. And then they were like, Okay, we got you back. Because, like, when <laughs> she went into the dream and took Freddy Krueger's hat, I was like, I'm in. Yeah. And then, like, for a minute, I was like, I'm out of here. And then as soon as that the Glenn's death happened, I'm like, oh, I'm back in. Right. And then when, like, Freddy got shot with gunpowder, I'm like, oh, this movie's amazing. <laughs> and then the last 10 minutes were like, yeah, this movie sucks. <laughs> and then for line, I would say the one line that really stuck out, me, out to me from, like, the very beginning was when... Nancy and her friends were talking about a night, the nightmare she had. Rod goes, I had a heart on this morning when I woke up, Tina. Had your name written all over it. Because <laughs> it's had like... Had your name written all over it. Like, that was just like... It was one of those lines where it's like it could be thrown out as disposable but it was so funny that i'm like man this this is good i'm surprised none of us picked hey up yours with a twirling lawnmower <laughs> no you remember rod saying that no <laughs> <laughs> classic rod classic, classic rod. rod god what a name rod uh rod lane <laughs> rod lane uh, was it short for roderick or was it just rod, oh, rod or lane. roger jesus christ Roger. <laughs> yeah, that's what the DG Roger. Not the G Roger. The DG Roger. <laughs> <laughs> There's two versions. <laughs> Which one is it? God damn it. Stinker for me. It's got to be the ending. The ending yeah. really tuned me out of the movie. And I think the ending was just so like bad that I was like, God, this ruined the movie for me. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I was so into it. And then that ending was just like, yeah, you you hate this movie now, and I was like, "Yep, I do." Dang. So, I don't well, know. Just it really the mother. I was a stinker too, but like that really just like got to me where I was like, the mother, the mother's kind of good because like let's be honest, the acting in this movie isn't the best, but she definitely makes it worse, <laughs> but in a better way. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Like I love her lines delivery. Like this the line you were talking about when she was at the funeral and she's like I've got something better. 
I'm going to get her some help. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just so good. Also, why was Nancy wearing a blue dress at a funeral? That really was, like, weird. Why was she wearing a I blue just, dress? A kid. I yeah. just pictured uh, when she was like, I'm going to get us some help. All I kept picturing was, like, her going to the package store, getting a <laughs> bottle of vodka, and being like, do you want any, kid? <laughs> I'll be honest. I will say my my impression of Nancy's mother sounds a lot like the mother from Everybody Loves Raymond. Murray. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. All right. Well, we're on to our final rating. They're going to rate the movie. What will they rate the movie? The killer is great. The victim sucks. The survivor is in between. What was that? <laughs> Our final rating system is killer, which is awesome. It's the best. It's a must watch and we definitely recommend it. A survivor is our middle tier. It means it was okay. There's some rewatchability and we might recommend this. A victim is just like it sounds. We were all the victim in watching it. We wouldn't recommend it, and it probably has no rewatch value. For me, A Nightmare on Elm Street is a killer. I mean, this is just the hierarchy of horror, in my opinion. Freddy Krueger is iconic. This is scary Freddy Krueger. This is Freddy at his best. Yes, he has one-liners, but they're menacing. He's terrifying. The kills are iconic. Yeah. I mean, it's actually scary. The dream stuff makes it scarier where you can be killed in your dream. It's such a cool, original concept. The whole movie is a very original concept. The thing that really took me out was the ending. But overall, I mean, like 99% of this movie is just amazing. So I got to give it a killer. How about you, Dan? My rating for this movie is also a killer. The concept alone makes this movie a killer for me yeah. in itself. Then you've got the execution of the effects. In some cases, some scenes still hold up very well today. And the seamless transitions from dream state to reality, that really makes the movie very unsettling. Like you can never get comfortable in what is real and what is not. One of the most iconic characters in American pop culture over the last 40 years because of like this genesis of his character in this film. And like no no one's going to be able to to play the role of Freddy like Robert England has. Mm -hmm. Like it's just not going to happen. This movie was the brainchild of one of the most influential horror screenwriters of all time, Wes Craven. His absence I think to this day, it's sorely missing. Like there there needs to be more of more Wes Craven content like if there was a way to bring him back to life it would be amazing how about you Bear Claw so I'm, little, I'm wrestling with this a little bit to be honest with you and, and here's why mm -hmm. well you know obviously I came down here killer hands down then I hear Logan talk and I think to myself is Freddy being forgotten now is Freddy, am I looking at this through nostalgia colored glasses? Is this just a survivor to be a historical artifact? Because maybe it's not a relevant thing anymore in horror. Because, uh, you know, it, it made me think about it a little bit. I think at the end of the day, I'm still going to give it a killer. Yeah. But not as strongly as when I first came down here, because is it as historically necessary and relevant to watch? Once I take my nostalgia colored glasses off, the fact that they that Pennywise is 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 a bigger figure in the mind of the younger generation now, I find I find fascinating. It's almost like we've started to forget about Freddy a little bit. So I'm going to call it killer. I think I'm still going to stay true, but I, I now am, am seeing my nostalgia colored glasses maybe for more than they were. Wow, that's yeah. kind of a hot take, Bear Club. Yeah. All right, Logan. I mean, everyone's saying it, you know, it's a killer. It's hard for me to decide because, like, this movie is really, really good. But that ending, man, really just kills yeah, it for it me. Yeah, took out of it. And I just, I just can't give it a killer. I am very, I just, I wish there was a, I wish there was an in-between tier for me. Like, because I would give it maybe a killing survivor. So this is a strong survivor for you? Yeah, yeah, maybe okay. a strong survivor. That's exactly how I'd put it. You know, it's not bad. It's just not 
great at the same time. Like, everything about this movie, the execution, the music, everything that happens in this movie, the story, the character development is all very, like, really good, really well done. Just, like, the delivery of just how how they wanted it to end just didn't feel right. Yeah. It didn't feel like they had a strong, like, this is what's going to happen. This is how we're going to end it all. And, you know, I, I never expected for it to have a happy ending. Horror movies rarely have happy endings. And when they do, they're mostly like, oh, yeah, we're just going to go about our day. But also, he's still out there or something like that. But this was just completely different. Threw it in a different direction. And it really just killed it off for me. So, like, I would give it a strong survivor. I don't know. Just like, ah. It's probably frustrating because it was on the line of killer for you. Yeah, and it's so good, too. Like, I'm not hating on it. Yep. Like, I would give it, like, I would give it a killer, but, like, if it didn't have that ending, like, I'd probably rate it, like, one of the strongest horror movies I've seen in a long time. I, I think that's a completely fair assessment. Nathan, our producer, also rated this one a killer, and he said it's there's a reason it's considered a classic. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I agree with that. And Bear Claw brought up a good point. Is this nostalgia? You know, are we seeing this? You know, I, I don't know. You be the judge. Let us know. Write to yeah. us at the padded room at Outlook.com. Yeah, let us know. If you're if you're one of our younger viewers, let us know if there's a lot of nostalgia that you think we're bringing to the table with this. I, I find myself bringing in a massive amount of nostalgia yeah. to this. But in some ways, Freddy is almost more of a comedic character. And if I think about his relationship with me and and then then a, a true horror figure. Right. Right, 100%. Now, we also asked our audience what their thoughts were on A Nightmare on Elm Street. So let's check our Instagram account, and that's at mouths.of.madness. Melanie underscore St. George. The Johnny Depp kill scene is my all-time fave. Yeah, Melanie, uh, three of us agree with you. And actually, that you know, it's one of my favorites, too, in all horror movies, so... Yeah, it's it's amazing. We also have a comment on our Facebook page as well. And this is from the Hathaway House of Horror. Just want to plug them really quick. They have a really good YouTube show. So go check them out as well. And they said, can't wait. My favorite horror movie of all time and my first series retrospective just over a year ago. So, wow, they did a they did one on this as well. So that's awesome. Well, that does it for us on our Nightmare on Elm Street episode. We'll be back soon with another movie review. And we're going to be doing my pick, which is the movie Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. But until then, back to the padded room with you. Oh man, that was such a weird dream. Oh, what am I doing? Wait, wait, why am I in a boiler room? Dan, what are you doing in here? I watched you die, Kevin. What? What is this place? This is like steam all over the place. Logan, is that you? Yeah, it is me. I don't know what we're all doing here. Oh no, shit. Oh, we fell, fell asleep. asleep. We... Ah! Do you hear that? Oh no! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs>